Hello students, welcome to the 20th lecture of this online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on plasmonic nanoparticles as antennas and webguides. So here is the lecture outline, we will look into some traditional uh, radio wave and microwave antennas, then we will see how plasmonic nano antennas look like. We will also look into the applications of plasmonic nano antennas plasmonic nanoparticle webguides, applications of plasmonic nanoparticle webguides and how to overcome losses using gain media in this kind of webguides. So, radio wave antennas are they are in existence for centuries now. So, these antennas are basically an electrically conductive structure that can convert an os oscillating current electric current into uh, an electromagnetic field and vice versa. So, a transmitter will be able to convert um, oscillating electric current into electromagnetic waves or radiation and a receiver antenna should be able to do the opposite of it. So, here are some examples of uh, radio wave antennas and microwave antennas, okay. they are put into two buckets. So, it you remember that antennas are key components in transmitters and receivers of uh, electromagnetic radiation and we have seen that at radio wave and microwave frequencies antennas can take the form of metallic wires, poles, loops, microstrips which are of the dimensions comparable to the wavelength that they are dealing with. Now, if you look into monopole antennas, so these are monopole antennas. So, monopole antennas basically comprise of a single metallic pole which is of length L and it is uh, mounted on a conducting plate and in that case the resonance frequency will be C over 4 L. That corresponds to a wavelength of lambda that is equals to 4 L or you can say that uh, the length of the monopole antenna is L which is lambda by 4. Okay? So, equivalently you can also have a dipole antenna which comprises of two poles dipole diamonds 2. So, there are two poles which are separated by a small gap as you can see here okay? and each of these poles are of length L and again L is lambda by 4 when this antenna will show resonance. There are other types of uh, antennas as well, loop and microstrip, we will not go into details of those. Okay? We are mainly focusing on this uh, dipole kind of uh, thing and monopole because we will see their analog in uh, the plasmonic domain. Right? So, an antenna may also take uh, the form of an electromagnetic conductive structure that could inter intercept an electromagnetic wave and can alter its angular distribution. Now, when we come to microwave frequencies, so these are basically microwave antennas okay? and in that case they are looking like a horn. So, this is a metallic horn that will be connected to the end of a waveguide. So, this is where, where the waveguide ends and this is the horn kind of uh, metallic horn kind of shape. So, this is a horn antenna. And you can also have a dish antenna which is uh, I believe everybody has seen dish antenna. This is basically a paraboidal uh, metallic surface um, that is basically a reflector and uh, the end of the waveguide which is carrying the signal this way or that way. Okay? If it is a transmitter signal, so the signal is coming from the waveguide and then it is reflected onto the reflector and then it is going out. Okay, and if it is a receiver antenna, so it does the exact opposite. Okay, so in this case, uh, the location of the waveguide is exactly at the focus. Okay, now these antennas are not necessarily resonant, and their dimensions must be substantially greater than the wavelength of the radiation. So that is the difference between um, the monopole-dipole antennas, that is the radio wave antennas, and the microwave antennas. Okay. Now, coming to optical antennas or plasmonic antennas for that matter, we will better say optical antennas okay? and uh, we will see that resonant optical antennas may be constructed by fabricating uh, metallic structures similar to those of uh, radio wave antennas 
and here the only important thing is that we have to scale down the dimension because the frequency of optical radiation is much higher than the uh, radio waves so the dimension the physical dimension of the elements antenna elements in optical frequency will also be much much smaller okay so here are some um, examples of optical antennas made of metallic structures that can exhibit uh, resonance at the optical frequencies like rod split ring double split ring and nanosphere okay so these are the examples of the resonant optical antennas now at optical frequencies the optical field interacts with the metallic antennas uh, such as these shown here rod split ring double split ring or nanosphere via spp waves surface plasmon polariton waves which have propagation wavelength much smaller than the free space optical wavelength so that is where we have discussed that you know because the surface plasmons have very large uh, wave number so they can actually uh, support very tiny wavelength and that is the reason why they allow you to have uh, that they allow uh, manipulation and guiding of electromagnetic radiation in much much sub wavelength dimension okay so in this case you can also see that the length of the optical quarter wave uh, dipole antenna lies in the nanometer regime right and optical nano antennas are also there uh, which are non resonant so in that case you can think of you know metal coated uh, tapered optical fiber uh, tip that is used for um, near field microscopy and also there are paraboidal mirror used in telescopes so these two um, things are also possible so these are like non resonant optical antennas and as you understand that the dimension of this optical antennas are typically far greater than the optical wavelength so they are very similar to the uh, microwave uh, antennas you can think of and these are very close to uh, sub these are basically sub wavelength antennas so they are basically close to the radio wave antennas we have seen in the previous slide so this plasmonic antennas operate as scatterers that can convert the incoming light into localized surface plasmon polariton waves that in turn radiate light in with modified spatial distribution so you can actually uh, decide the directionality of the light beam being scattered and also you can decide on the uh, spatial distribution of the optical intensity of the reflected or scattered light now metallic nanosphere looks pretty simple as an antenna so this is basically an example of a resonant optical antenna and it exhibits resonance when it is illuminated by a planar optical wave now why i am starting with this because this is nothing but a plasmonic nanoparticle or in, you can think of any um, metallic nanoparticles um, in optical regime okay and as we mentioned that you can excite local surface plasmons by direct illumination so you can simply shine light on this nano antenna and it will start giving you that kind of characteristics so at the resonance frequency so for gold nanoparticles this rise lies typically around 520 nanometer for silver nanoparticles it lies typically around 480 nanometer right so at the resonance frequency the field in the vicinity of the nanosphere gets enhanced and the field also gets localized so it is very strong just around the nanoparticle and that also gives rise to the scattering cross section so the scatter the amount of scattering by this nanoparticle at resonance become much larger than its geometrical cross section and that is how they can actually work as an antenna there are other uh, metallic nanostructures also possible which have got nanoscale dimensions such as this kind of split ring uh, structure or double split ring structure they also can be designed in a way to have resonance at optical frequencies and uh, mind that their properties their resonant properties are basically shape and material dependent so you can get tunability uh, in terms of the um, resonant frequency where you want your antennas to operate 
based on the design and the material of the antenna. We have also seen uh, till now th the discussion was on this resonant optical nano antennas which are useful to localize and couple light into small absorbers. So, you can also think of uh, this kind of structures. Okay. They are able to localize and couple light into small absorbers such as single molecule. Now, in the case of near field microscopy arrangement where you have a metal rod like this on a conducting, conducting pedestal and that may be placed at a tapered end of an optical fiber and this can create a monopole antenna. Right? So, this will be useful for near field microscopy. And you can also think of uh, another arrangement where a nanosphere is placed at the end of a pointed glass tip that also carries out in a carries out a similar function of localizing and coupling light to small absorbers like molecules and all these things. So, in general resonant optical antenna placed between uh, an emitter and an absorber can enhance, um, so these are the resonant optical antenna, they are not, these are the resonant optical antennas, this one and this one. So, they are placed between an emitter and an absorber. So, here the emitter is that molecule okay, and you can, uh, that will emit the light and this will be the absorber that will um, catch the light or it will um, gather the light you can say or collect the light. So, they this kind of interaction between the emitter and the absorber can serve to enhance the interaction by facilitating the process of radiation and detection. So, these are some examples of resonant uh, antennas in near field microscopy. Right? Now, let us go back quickly to the basics of what happens when plasmonic nano antennas or metallic nano antennas or you can say metallic nanoparticles, they interact with light. So, if you remember from our previous couple of lectures that metallic nanoparticles have abundance of surface electrons and which norm naturally oval like a piece of jelly. So, when there is an impinging light when light falls on them the electric field of the light oscillates at a particular frequency that is the frequency of the light right that you have uh, chosen. Now, when the frequency of the light matches the natural frequency of oscillation of the electrons on that metallic nanoparticle, there will be resonance. So, that resonance we call as localized surface plasmon resonance. Now, LSPRs give rise to a drastic alteration of the incident radiation pattern and to striking effects such as sub wavelength localization of electromagnetic energy which we already discussed that using by converting photons to you are basically transferring the energy from photons to plasmons right and by doing that you are able to because plasmons have wavelength which are deep sub wavelength you are able to have sub wavelength localization of electromagnetic energy you are also able to have high intensity hotspots hotspots means the places where there are high huge concentration of electric fields. Okay? So, these are called electric field hotspots and you can also find or achieve directional scattering. It means you will not scatter in all the direction rather your scattering will be only focused in one particular direction. So, that is directional scattering of light. Okay? So, here are some of the examples of typical uh, plasmonic nano antennas that have been fabricated till now. So, you can think of spherical dipole you can think of elongated ellipse. So, these are like nano, these are like nano rise or nano, yeah, mm, some, th these are ellipsoidal shape. You can think of single wire, which is basically a nano rod. You can think of dimers, mean there are two particles, two spherical particles. You can think of two wire nano antenna, it's like this, this single wire, this is two wire. You can also have nano dot array, so where you place this dipoles in a linear chain. You can have bow tie shape antennas. Here there will be very strong confinement of electric uh, field. You can also have uh, Diablo kind of shape. You can have nano rods uh, patterned or you know 
placed as Yagiuda kind of antenna shape. You can think of spiral nano antennas. You can think of fractal design. You can also think of um, nano hole array which are from the Babinet principle. So, these all different shapes have been tried and tested for different um, applications. Typically, they all have resonance in um, close to visible range. So, invisible and near infrared range. Okay. So, that was the entire um, motivation behind studying this kind of structures because LSPR can also couple the electromagnetic fields emitted by the molecules atoms placed in the vicinity of nanoparticles leading uh, in turn to a strong modification of the radiative and non-radiative properties of the emitter. So, you can actually um, probe a single molecule or a atom using this kind of uh, small dipole antennas. Now, since LSPR enables an efficient uh, transfer of electromagnetic energy from the near to the far field of the metallic nanoparticles and vice versa, they can be considered as uh, antennas because they are able to you know uh, transfer energy both ways okay? and they work in a similar way as the radio antennas. But only difference is that these nano, nano antennas work at much higher frequency range. Right. So, what are the materials as I already discussed that these are plasmonic nano antennas when they are operating at the optical frequencies the material we choose are of gold and silver because of their good metallic properties and low absorption in this particular uh, frequency range. So, here is an example of uh, plasmonic nano antennas for unidirectional scattering. So, when we say scattering you can think of a silver nanoparticle coated with some kind of uh, dielectric um, dielectric layer okay now why we require two of these to get a unidirectional scattering now the reason is um, that you can think of uh, this metallic nanoparticles to have the electric dipole because you can have the electron cloud moving on top and you know top and bottom it, it can wobble depending on the electric field right S but the charges will always remain on the surface of this metal right that is the fundamental physics that we know from school days. But then when we have a coating of a dielectric layer around this one there can be a polarization current in this uh, coating and this circular current will give rise to different magnetic modes magnetic dipole quadrupole octopole and so on similarly here also on the electric uh, on the metallic surface you can get electric dipole electric quadrupole electric uh, octopole depending on the charge distribution of the oscillation that is taking place now if you remember from the mis scattering theory we are able to calculate the scattering cross section of any spherical particle of radius r Okay, if we know these coefficients which is a n and b n these are the mean scattering coefficients right. So, a n is the electric uh, nth order or nth mode uh, electric coefficient and b n is basically the nth mode um, or nth order mode uh, magnetic coefficient. So, if you think of uh, making it unidirectional the first important thing is that you have to ensure that you know you are getting an overlap of the same order of the electric and magnetic modes and they are also of the same magnitude right. So, that is the reason th that is how you will get a unidirectional scattering. So, this is one example of that. So, here a 1 b 1 are non-zero remaining all are zeros all higher order modes are zeros ok. It means you are only able to excite um, in this case electric dipole and magnetic dipole and if you make them perfectly overlap you are basically getting a um, unidirectional scattering. It means you see the scattering lobe is only in the forward direction there is nothing in the backward direction right. So, this is a unidirectional scattering only problem is that the beam width alpha is much wider. Now, look at this one here only a 2 and b 2 are non-zero remaining ones are 0 it means you are only 
able to excite quadruples okay so when you excite only the quadruples and make them completely overlap the electric quadruple and magnetic quadruple completely overlap and they are same in magnitude you actually come up with this kind of a uh, front loop so you see this is much more directional because the beam width is much narrower in this case but it comes with some additional side loops what are these these are basically uh, the 3d scattering pattern which are cut or sliced okay for better visibility now when you go to the higher order modes like hexapoles or octopoles okay so you are able to that is a3 b3 and non-zero remaining all are zero okay in that case you see you can actually make it more directional but there will be some scattering losses because the side lobes come out okay so this tells us that there is possibility of achieving unidirectional scattering if you are able to do that now if you take a practical example of a silver nanosphere coated with uh, n equals 2.5 uh, kind of material and there if you try to see that this is the scattering uh, only from the electric and magnetic uh, dipoles and you are able to match them here exactly so, and this is what you will get you will get a very um, you very much unidirectional scattering pattern that we have seen before at this particular wavelength right now if you consider these are the radius of R1 is the radius for the silver um, nanosphere and R2 is the radius for this uh, coating the, or the shell. Okay? If you choose a different set of parameters, you will be able to get a match between um, electric quadruple and magnetic quadruple. These are all described here. Okay? And if you see that, you are actually getting a kind of much narrower one. But then um, theta equals 0 and theta equals 5, they are not exactly matching because there is slight mismatch between the two things but that they are very close to each other okay and if you compare this with a um, uniform sphere of dielectric material okay so if you take a, a uniform sphere like this of refractive index um, n equal 3.4 you will see that you are only getting uh, at this kind of uh, mode okay and the scattering pattern is actually not unidirectional so you have scattering in the forward direction you have scattering in the backward direction so what is this red and the blue thing so the red one shows the plot along phi equals 0 and uh, phi equals 90 is shown is along this axis phi 0 is this one horizontal and the vertical cuts you can say and you can see here that the red and the blue are not overlapping so there is a perfect overlap here there is a little bit of mismatch here and this one is a complete mismatch okay because it's not symmetrical azimuthally symmetrical okay so you can also make uh, this kind of nanoparticles line up to make a yagi uda kind of uh, design so what you can see here that when you just have two nanoparticles this is a particular um, this is the beam width and you have got tiny side lobes which are not so good and you see this maximum radiation intensity is 1.2 e to the minus 12 okay this is a cross section okay basically uh, in meter square and when you make n equals 3 you see you, the side lobes are getting uh, narrower because you are kind of you know this overlaps are kind of making this uh, constructive interference and then your beam lobes are getting narrower so this happens with n equals 3 also the intensity of the beam is also increasing when you go for n equals 10 that means you have lined up 10 such nanoparticles so you are working at 1550 nanometer or 1.55 micrometer the d is the gap between them that is taken as 700 nanometer here so when you take 10 such nanoparticles and you shine light from here you see a very very good unidirectional antenna so the maximum scattering uh, cross-section has also increased 7.9 to the minus 12 
and uh, there is no back scattering so that is also perfectly good so he, these are simulation results as well as uh, so fdtt simulation finite difference time domain uh, method simulation results are shown here along with cda that is coupled dipole approximation i will not have time to go through the, but these are like different analytical techniques this one to uh, find out the scattering calculations so they are showing that the simulation results are good match to the theory it means the way the it has been calculated is correct you can also have uh, 2d plasmonic nano antennas like this okay so you can have 2d plasmonic nano antennas something like you have a gold nano rod in a um, silver nano cuboid okay and you can line them up as in um, kind of uh, array 2d array so there also you can calculate what is the scattering cross section theoretical and uh, simulation you can find it out here the the reason to show this one is that different elements can be also so each of these particles can be actually modeled as tiny tiny dipoles which are all interacting with each other and this overall particle is also interacting with another particle okay so if you look into these two particles okay you can think of these two particles lined up here now depending on the electric field direction so if the electric field direction is this one so we call this as le that is longitudinal edge edge polarization it means the polarization is along the longitudinal edge you will have dipoles created like this plus minus plus minus and you will have a kind of bonding type of interaction so when this kind of interaction happens the energy lowers and it will redshift you can also have the other type of interaction when the nanoparticles are placed side by side and or you can say nano antennas are placed side by side and the electric field is along the transverse direction you have plus minus plus minus and this positive charges they are closer to each other now or the negative charges they are closer to each other so they they will experience a repulsive force and that will actually increase the energy and you will see a blue shift in the resonance peak Anti-bonding type of interaction is also seen when you have electric field in this kind of orientation or in this kind of orientation. So here also you can see that what is happening, these are side by side and electric field is along the longitudinal edge. So you can have anti-bonding interaction here and this is where they are next to each other and electric field along the transverse edge. So for different different gap lx and ly this is lx and this is ly you can actually find out what is the well there is a typo here this has to be z this is x okay so you can also find out so le is nothing but h to h separation ss is side by side to side separation so for different dimensions you see the resonance peak looks different there may be new other peaks coming up but overall they all look like a having a resonant wavelength so that is how this can work as 2d plasmonic antennas there are other types of uh, 2d plasmonic antennas possible like you can have um, 2d array of uh, gold nanoparticles spherical gold nanoparticles or you can have them in other shapes like spikes and so on dodecahedron okay so rhomb this this shape is called uh, rhombic do dodecahedron these are different shapes but uh, they all actually serve a different purpose here as you can see so if you just think of gold nanospheres this one and then if you keep on increasing the size of the spheres keeping the lattice constant same you will see that the resonance is getting red shifted in wavelength that is happening because as you keep on increasing the size of the nanospheres the nanospheres are getting very close to each other their interaction is getting very stronger and that actually gives you this red shift and when you change the shape from spherical to rhombic dodecahedron to spikes the spikes will have much more electric field concentration along the spikes um, because of this uh, lightning rod effect 
and you can see that they are able to interact much strongly with each other and that is why the resonance for the spike one is much redshifted as compared to the nanosphere arrays okay you can also have uh, different applications of this plasmonic nano antennas one more most prominent application is in the field of making solar cells more efficient so you can use this metallic nano antennas at the front surface of the solar cell to uh, absorb light as well as they can scatter light into the absorber layer so here the main application is not as absorber rather forward scatterer so they actually um, allowing the light to actually go into this absorber layer and whatever is getting reflected that is again reflected back by this nanoparticle layer so that it gets a chance to get absorbed so that is how the efficiency of the solar cell can be improved you can also have nano antennas embedded inside the solar cell so here they will be acting as absorbers at the resonance wavelength and they will help you um, generate more hot electrons you can also have metal corrugation at the back surface of a cell and if they are sub wavelength and these are metallic ones so they also give rise to plasmons so they will allow you to absorb more efficiently so these are the different methods of you know improving the light trapping efficiency or light conversion efficiency so here is an example that with uh, three dimensional solar cell uh, as compared to the nanoparticle cluster solar cell or the flat solar cell the three dimensional solar cell like this with nanoparticles um, they are actually having the highest efficiency so these are the 3d solar cells what people have tried to make and they have got the highest efficiency so that that's a work reported in 2016 now things have also improved further there people are able to go even further efficiency in solar technology you can also use plasmonic nano antennas for sensing applications so how it works like you have two gold nano spheres maybe and you see that you know they are you are able to you are going to sense single strand dna or double strand dna so single strand dna's are flexible so they allows these nanoparticles to come closer to each other when the nanoparticles come closer to each other your resonance peak will get redshifted but if if it is a double strand dna that gets attached between the nanoparticles they are much stronger or stiffer you must say so the gap between the nanoparticles are larger so it will be a much blue shifted one so the spectral shift allows you to do the sensing and tell you whether it's a double uh, stranded or a single stranded dna you can also do um, molecular sensing using the plasmonic hotspots that we have decide, uh, discussed like plasmonic nano antennas will have a lot of electric field hotspots in between so there if you uh, have some sensing molecules and you try to do the surface enhanced Raman scattering experiments you will get much enhanced uh, effects out of this so these are also applications of plasmonic nano antennas they are basically serving as test beds for SERS okay or you can say they are SERS substrate SERS SERS okay you can also think of waveguides so another uh, novel concept of guiding electromagnetic radiation with transverse confinement that is below the diffraction limit and it is based on the near field coupling between closely spaced uh, metallic nanoparticles so if you think of one dimensional uh, particle array like this they can exhibit coupled modes due to near field interactions between adjacent nanoparticles and we have to make sure that the particle diameter is much much smaller than lambda and in that case the light matter interactions could lead to oscillating homogeneous polarization of the nanoparticle volume and that results in a oscillating dipole field so one particle will excite the another particle this will act as a source for the next particle and that is how the you know oscillation will keep on propagating along the length unless it is uh, you know decayed because there is some loss associated with each of these 
particles so there will be damping loss is damping so that is where you know it it will propagate to a certain distance and then it will die off so here you can see this is basically a linear chain of uh, spherical nanoparticles so here you can see that you know the electric field density um, normalized total field density has been uh, intensity is um, measured here at different positions along this chain so gradually the peak position peak is actually getting lower okay so you have high low high low high low and so on and that is how it has been measured so it has been also measured along the uh, transverse and longitudinal direction so the transverse one is this one when the excitation is along the transverse direction so that is the black curve so in that case it propagates even further and longitudinal excitation is this one when the polarization is along the length of the chain okay so in that case it propagates a shorter distance okay so there are examples to prove that people have done um, FDTD or finite difference time domain simulation uh, to show all these things so consider a, um, a chain of gold nanospheres these are 50 nanometer gold nanospheres and they are separated by a center to center distance of 75 nanometer and there is air in between nothing else and uh, these are the calculations of uh, the pulse peak position over time okay um, in this plasmonic waveguide consistent consisting of the spherical nanoparticles for the longitudinal so this is the longitudinal polarization this black squares and the transverse one is this one when the polarization is along the transverse direction so this is this one so you can see this can actually sustain much longer okay yeah, and these are the snapshots so this as you can see these are basically the propagation along the uh, longitudinal direction and this is when it is along the transverse one here also um, an, another set of simulation is shown so these are basically um, time snapshots of the electric field for transverse pulse propagation showing a negative phase delay with an anti parallel observation of the phase and group velocities so this has been uh, done at different different time steps uh, starting from t equals uh, t naught then you added a de delay with it that de delta t 2 delta t 3 delta t and so on okay so you are able to see the particular uh, the arrow is showing the movement of the particular uh, face front and uh, these simulations though it is not clearly visible here unless it is an animation okay these simulations also confirmed a negative phase velocity of the transverse modes okay and when you change the shape of the particles from spherical to uh, ellipsoid there are also changes in the um, transverse and the longitudinal modes Th those are propagating along these waveguides okay so the pulse peak positions over time in a plasmonic waveguides consisting of spheroidal particles like this one so here the aspect ratio of the particle is taken as 3 is to 1 okay so we are showing the longitudinal as uh, squares okay and transverse as the triangles ones and we are comparing this with um, the spherical particles so consider this case the black data points so the black data points are basically case one where the particles the spherical spheroidal particles are having the same volume as that of the spherical particles okay so that is the case of uh, this one the black um, squares and you can see the other one that is the case, case 2 that is the blue ones the blue ones are basically those cases when the particles with an increased volume but they have uh, same short axis so in that case the surface to surface spacing is also maintained so they are having a larger volume but the same short axis and surface to surface spacing so that is the blue points so this also provides you a comparison uh, 
that when you change the size and shape of these plasmonic nano antennas to form a waveguide, you can actually control the propagation characteristics along the transverse mode or along the longitudinal mode that also you can decide. So, all these things tell you about the excitation, which excitation you should use to propagate longer and which kind of particles you should take. So, this is an experimental uh, demonstration of a silver nanorod which has got an aspect ratio of 90 is to 30 is to 30 okay? and there is a gap of 50 nanometer in between them. And this is a far field excitation spectra of this kind of chain of particles. Okay? So, the square one is basically the result from single particles and uh, the triangle ones are basically from the nanoparticle chain. So, you see there is a definite change in the resonance wavelength for this kind of um, linear chain. Right? And the experimentally observed surface plasma resonance for the single silver rods shown here and the chain of this same um, nano rods in a close pack kind of chain arrangement for the transverse uh, illumination. So, in this case the transverse means they are the orient electric field orientation is in this direction and that is the difference you can actually see the ex excitation wavelengths or energy are different. So, there is a blue shift between the two spectra and that results from the near field interaction between the particles in the chain. And this you can actually understand from those kind of uh, what is happening when the two particles are next to each other and they have a electric field along this way. Okay? So, you can actually analyze the kind of interactions from uh, that kind of analog analogy. You can also um, see or visualize this kind of uh, plasmonic wave propagation um, along a, a nanoparticle waveguide by introducing some kind of uh, dye. Okay? So, in order to locally excite a traveling wave on this structure, the tip of the near field optical microscope like this okay, can be used as a local illumination source. So, this you are only exciting one particular nanoparticle okay, and then the energy is basically transported along this and then if you put some kind of dye here okay, that is able to do some uh, extra uh, like there are some scattering from this and that can be detected in the far field and which is shown here. right? So, you are able to do some local excitation, you are able to do the energy transport because there is no energy directly um, illuminating this one. The energy was illuminated here and it has been transported along this chain by this coupling. Okay? So, these black dots are basically the particles, this is where the coupling takes place okay? and this is where you have put a dye and you can that energy in the dye will allow you to have some fluorescence and that can be measured. So, local excitation, this is the SEM image of the plasmonic waveguide okay? and these are basically the images of the topography and the fluorescence that you can see. So, the image that is shown in this one C show the fluorescent spheres okay, deposited in the region without waveguides and uh, here you can actually see the spheres deposited on top of uh, the ends of the four nanoparticle chain. So, one, two, three, four. Okay? So, this is the four nanoparticle chain, this is the illumination source okay? and that is how um, you know you can actually see the local excitation and scattering. Well, I think uh, they have pictorially shown these as the nanoparticles. Okay? The black ones are basically the dyes. Okay? You can also see um, energy guiding and uh, sensing on plasmonic waveguides which are operating at telecom window at uh, 1550 um, nanometer. So, this, this kind of waveguide is based on a two dimensional lattice of nanopart metallic nanoparticles on the thin undercut silicon membrane. So, you can 
see the SEM image of a fabricated device here. So, the dispersion relation will not go into the calculation of this, but then for this periodic arrangement, you can actually find out the dispersion relation. And this is the dispersion relation and the mode profile from the top view and the side view of this device is shown here. And uh, this is basically nothing but a plasmon waveguide on a thin silicon membrane which operates at uh, in the near infrared window that is 1550 nanometer. We have also understood that this metallic nanoparticles they have they are lossy in uh, visible wavelength. So, uh, the propagation of plasmons will not happen infinitely they will gradually decay they will lose energy. So, ohmic losses in metal are responsible for the decay of the plasmons when they are propagating through them. So, you can actually compensate for this losses by using some kind of gain media. So, you can think of some quantum dots as a gain media where you can optically pump uh, them and uh, based on that they will be able to you know um, provide you some gain and allow longer propagation of plasmon along this gold nanoparticle layer. Okay. So, sorry, it is a gold layer which has got uh, you know quantum dots through this PMMA. So, there is a PMMA slab which has got this quantum dot. So, you are putting optical uh, pump on this. So, that is how you can increase the um, propagation length of plasmons propagating on this gold layer. Fine. So, you can see the intensity profile along the ridge and this is how it decays. So, you can also see the propagation length how it increases with the um, pump irradiance. So, when there is pump it can actually um, go to a very long distance like up to 17 micron. Okay? In other case it actually dies down much faster. So, you can actually use uh, optical gain media to um, overcome the losses and uh, allow surface plasmon wave to provide uh, propagate much longer. So, optical field confinement also increases with optical gain and uh, the presence of the gain can lead to a complete vanishing of the denominator and you will get a very very large propagation constant. Okay. So, with that we will stop here today and in the next class uh, we will see plasmonic nanoparticles um, in other applications. So, if you have got any um, queries or doubts on this particular lecture, you can drop an email to this email address mentioning MOOC on the subject line. Thank you.